if you want a luxury SUV, should you go for a Range Rover or maybe something American like the huge Cadillac Escalade? Or maybe you should go posher still. Maybe. Come here. Oh, hello. Are you lost? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Let's take you back. <laughs> Come on then. Come on, dogger. Dog. Come on this way. Come on. It's this way. Sorry about that. It was a random dog. I had to go and take it back to its owner. Anyway, that's all done now. And back to what I was saying. So if you're after a luxury SUV, should you go for a Range Rover or maybe something unique like a Cadillac Escalade? Unique in the UK at least. Or should you go posher still and maybe consider a Bentley Bentayga or a Rolls Royce Cullinan? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Buy, sell, car. Wow. If you're considering a luxury SUV, you probably don't mind attracting a bit of attention. So which of these cars is the best at turning heads? Let's start with the Maybach GLS. When you're being chauffeured about in your luxurious GLS, you want people on the outside to recognise it as being a cut above a normal Mercedes vehicle. And that's why the Maybach has some styling upgrades, such as the prominent Maybach grille with the vertical slats in it. You've got Maybach written in it as well. The lower bumper has this chrome honeycomb effect, though the chrome is all plastic. Actually, that's plastic too, and this is plastic. But it's shiny, shiny, and shiny, shiny is very good. Shiny means expensive, obviously. Here at the side, the thing that really sets this apart as the Maybach version of the GLS is the optional two-tone paintwork. So you better tick that option box if you're buying this car. Another thing that makes it stand out, the unique Maybach wheels, 23 inches, and the spokes mimic the veins on the grill. Another feature, of course, is more chromage, look all around the windows, very nice. And of course, the running boards. Oh, stay on, nope. <laughs> here at the back, you've got plenty of Maybach badges. So there's one just here on this rear three quarter, Maybach written there and GLS 600 because you can't get 600 on the normal Mercedes GLS, it has to be a Maybach. Then you've got more chrome here, more chrome here, even around the extensions for the exhaust pipes, which are an exaggeration because the real pipes are a bit smaller and hidden inside. Then more chrome here. All well, this chrome does cost money though, but Maybach isn't the only brand with a chrome fetish. Bentley also loves the shiny stuff, especially if you go for an extended wheelbase version of the new Bentayga. Sometimes when you're traveling in luxury, you want others to know that you're traveling in luxury. And that's why this extended wheelbase version of the Bentayga has a few design cues which make it look a little bit more premium. For instance, it comes with vertical slats in the grille. In addition to the mesh, you can have it in this chrome effect. It's plastic, really. Or you can have it in black. Then there's these unique mirrored 22 inch alloy wheels. You can't get these beautiful things on the standard Bentayga. Now you might think from a distance, it just looks like a normal Bentayga. However, the extended wheelbase version actually has 2,500 new parts. To create this extended wheelbase Bentayga, Bentley has increased the distance between the front and the back wheels by 180 millimeters. So about that much. Now it has a wheelbase of 3,175 millimeters, which is 40 millimeters more than a Maybach GLS, but unfortunately 22 millimeters shorter than the new long wheelbase Range Rover. Oh well, you can't win them all. Speaking of the new Range Rover, let's take a look at that car's design. I mean, it's clearly identifiable as a Range Rover. I'm not just saying that because it says it there. It looks like the old one in terms of the design, but it's just modernized, it's smooth, it's sleek, it's cool. I also like the fact that they've integrated all the sensors and the cameras and stuff for the self-driving technology here in this lower part of the grille. You can't really see it. Speaking of the low grille, it's different depending on which model you get. So the SV has a slightly sportier look. Here at the side, you notice there's less lines going on, just one or two here and there. It's quite a smooth look, isn't it? So what also makes it smooth. See this bit here, the way the bodywork is actually curled over so you don't have traditional seals. There's obviously still seals in there, otherwise water will get in. But it's really cool the way they've done that. Like this as well, this part here, it's not plastic, one big piece of glass. And of course, look, door handles that pop out when you want to get in the car. There you go. Last thing to mention, alloy wheels start at 20 inches, rising to 23 inches. Apparently the 23 inch wheels are the same way as the old 22s. And if you have the SV version, you have slightly different looking wheels. Here at the back, oh, it's lovely, isn't it? kind of want it. There's no exhaust pipes there. Well, they are, they're hidden underneath. 
Thank you very much Land Rover for not fitting your new Range Rover with fake exhaust pipes like you might get on some German SUV. Also, thank you for fitting it with these super cool lights. And do you see the indicators? They're like hidden until they illuminate. Yeah, I'm liking the look of this thing. All these design touches are pretty subtle, but the Range Rover is still a very imposing looking car, partly because of its sheer size. But there's another luxury SUV that makes it look tiny in comparison. I'm talking about the massive Cadillac Escalade. At the front, it is big. At the side, it's very long, very long. In fact, I'm going to measure it out now. So it's one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, five meter, almost six meters long. Though this is the long wheelbase version. Meanwhile, at the back, it's very wide. It's also very chromey, isn't it? That's because it's the luxury model. You can get a sport model, which isn't quite so in your face. But if you're looking for an in-your-face SUV, nothing compares with a Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Let's talk about the Cullinan's design. Now, it's an absolutely massive thing, isn't it? Look at it, it's huge. Down here, though, being the black badge, we've got a sports exhaust on a Rolls-Royce, goddammit. The exhaust pipes within there are real. Look, I'm proving it with the oversized car wire stick of truth. This is the first ever SUV or four-wheel drive since Rolls-Royce was founded back in 1906. In fact, Rolls doesn't call this an SUV, it's called an XUV, as in luxury SUV. You, I don't know, I'm getting all confused. Anyway, they say it's the first SUV with a three box design, like a normal saloon car. The first box is the bonnet, second box is this part here, and the third box, which is supposed to be saloon-like, is this bit here, it's supposed to be like a boot. I'm not really seeing it. Do you know what I'm seeing? Don't, don't say it. I've got to say it, I've got to say what I think. It looks a bit like a London cab. Oh, oh, I was trying to hold that in. Rolls probably aren't going to lend me a car again for saying that. But it kind of does, doesn't it? Sorry. Still, it's massive. It's huge. Look at it. And you can see the relationship to the Phantom as well. Actually, underneath the skin, it's pretty much the same as the Phantom. It's based on the Phantom platform. So anyone who says, oh, it's just the BMW X7, because after all, BMW owns Rolls Royce. It's not. They're wrong. It's a Rolls, a proper Rolls, built in Britain, in Goodwood, by men and their hands. Look at the front of it. Wow, it's huge. Apparently, the light design here with this thick brow is supposed to look like the brow of a Saxon warrior. OK, then. When you first sit in a colour nun, it's a bit of a weird experience. The way that you have that huge Rolls-Royce bonnet, but it's just even higher than in any other Rolls-Royce. The interior feels just like a Rolls-Royce should do. Impeccable quality, oh, it's all just so lovely. And there's metal everywhere, metal, 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 metal. Then there's super soft leather, leather, leather here as well, leather. And this being the black badge, you get carbon fiber here, carbon fiber here, carbon fiber there, and here as well. Then there's the yellow piping you get with the black badge model as well, which just sets off the interior. It is glorious. Though I have found a couple of cheap bits of plastic and they're all just round here. The controller for the steering wheel, the stalks. That's all that I can complain about because other than that, yeah, it's lovely. There's decent practicality too, so storage, cup holders, little glove box, decent door bins. I'm happy about that. I'm also happy about this, the grab handles. Not your usual plastic crap, soft leather and metal. Oh yeah, living the Rolls-Royce lifestyle. You might think this would put the Cullinan in a league of its own, but Maybach has put serious time, effort and money into making its flagship GLS feel just as special inside. It's as though Mercedes has given a GLS to an interior designer for a boutique hotel because it does feel like an exclusive experience in here. So you've got fine nappa leather and it's extended so you get it on the doors and on the dash. Though this has the upgraded, super lovely, super extended white nappa leather which is even extended up here on the roof lining and I shouldn't rub it because I'll get it all grubby with my dirty hands. 
you know, it costs £13,000 as well, so I want to do that. As standard, you do get a Maybach steering wheel, which looks lovely. And I do like the fact that it's got wood on it. Normally, I don't like wood on a steering wheel, but it works in here. So what also works, this wood across the dash. That is designed to mimic the kind of wood that you find in high-end yachts, because people who are going to buy this car probably have a high-end yacht. If you don't like the gloss effect, you can have it with open pour wood instead. Under here, you've got your cup holders, and you can either cool your Coke. No, not that Coke. I mean Coca-Cola or heat up your coffee. Just on here, you've got the Maybach logo, and that's where you just rest your wrist when you're using the touchpad for the infotainment system. You've got metal pedals there with the Maybach logo on them, lovely. Also down here, you've got thick carpets. Now you're gonna need that if you're going up against things like the Bentley Bentayga or the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Also, just down there, you've got your Maybach branded kick plates. Lovely. There is only one thing, though, that I'm not so keen on. It's this, look. The gear selector is like that on an A-Class. They have tried to jazz it up a little bit by putting some chrome trim on it here and here, but still, they should have like covered it in leather or made it out of onyx or, or even myrrh. So, if that's how the Germans do luxury, what's it like inside an American luxury SUV? Is it all gaudy trims and look at me badges? Well, no, actually. Here in the front, the Cadillac is big. It's big. Loads of room. It's quite a distance between you and the front passenger. You've got this huge centre console which separates you. This massive screen bank here and it's sort of curved as well. Remember when like TVs were curved, it was like a phase. Well, Cadillac have just caught up to that trend now that everyone else has moved on. So the infotainment system itself is pretty decent. It's very easy to control and navigate through. You can use it as a touch screen or you can control it with this swivel wheel and of course it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The digital driver's display doesn't seem to come on unless I actually start the engine, so bear with me. I don't know if it's an American thing or a car thing or whether it's a me thing. There we go. So you can scroll through different menus and settings and stuff like that. But one thing that I find a bit weird is the rev count. It's like this like straight line bar. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I'm going to turn that off. There we go. I do like the fact that you have physical buttons for the climate control, that is nice. And the quality in here is, is pretty decent as well. But there is lots of storage. Yes, yeah, storage down here. There's a space here for your mobile phone, though I'm not sure it'll fit my foldy phone. Oh, I guess it will just about like that. Also under here, there's some storage with some USB ports. And down here, a big size glove box. I bet you can fit a 45 in there. Seats are comfy and very large very large it's all right it's cadillac isn't the only brand that takes a minimalist approach to luxury interiors though the same goes for the range rover here on the inside the range rover is a pretty blooming lovely place to sit to tell you the truth it's got a really nice clean design to it it's very very comfy the chairs are lovely you've got these armrests as well so you feel like you're in the captain's seat also storage is very good look you've got loads of room under here and oh, what's the only left in this some chocomel and a couple of random fibers yeah then underneath here you have some spacious cup holders look in fact bottle rattles around in there and then underneath here what's this wireless charging for your mobile phone but we've got a metallic sharpie probably for signing autographs a gucci set of sunglasses there and some more fibers what is it with the fibers and look we've got some usb charging port there as well now this trim is all quite shiny and because it's black plastic it might actually scratch quite easily so you've got to be careful with that then you have your gear selector there and this rotary dial which controls your different driving modes moving on to the climate control it's separate from the main infotainment screen which is good though it's still a bit of a faff to use because you have to push for your seat and pull for your heating or your fan speed yeah so that can be a bit of a fap when you're driving along and you have to look down to go right i need to do a push do a pull what what setting am i on oh god no i wanted to turn the temperatures down ah oh, oh, come on stop 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 why do i stop it press or pull and then turn that yeah, see what i mean anyway infotainment system itself generally pretty slick it is the best system I've seen on any Jaguar Land Rover product. And you've got a curved screen as well, which should help reduce glare from the big display. Now it's quite easy to navigate through all the different functions and you've got haptic feedback. So it clicks when you press a button like that. It would be nice if there's actually some physical shortcut buttons, but it's still very, very easy to use. Though to be fair, most people are gonna hook up their phone and use that. And I would obviously use an Android phone, but the owner of this car is clearly an Apple person, aren't they?
Moving on to the digital driver's display, the graphics are nice and crisp and everything's very clear. The buttons to control it though are a little bit of a faff and the menus aren't that intuitive. What I can't fault though is the driving position, so obviously being a posh car you have electrically adjustable steering wheel and loads of adjustment in the seats, which you control using these buttons here. Quality is good, there's a notable step up in quality over the previous generation car, though it's still not quite there compared to a Bentley Bentayga. Reason being you've got some cheap materials here on the steering wheel and up here and some other bits and pieces about the place. This doesn't mean the Range Rover feels cheap inside, it doesn't. The Bentayga just has even posher feeling materials. It's just lovely in here, absolutely gorgeous. Just the material quality, the design. Admittedly, this does have the 10,000 pound Mulliner pack, which includes like quilted stitching on the seats, these lovely aluminium pedals and a bit more diamond quiltiness here on the doors. Great. A few buttons feel a little bit kind of cheap for such an expensive car, but overall it's just exquisite. Invitation system is good as well. It's not the best in the world but it's pretty simple and easy to use and you've got a digital driver's display which is nice. I love Bentley interiors. Oh look, leatheriness. Oh and a double sun visor. That's worth the asking price alone. And that's not all. Check out these optional upgrades you can get on the extended wheelbase version. All four door inlays on this car have this unique metal bit of trim on it. What happens is the craftspeople at Bentley get a big piece of metal and they just burn away the bits they don't want to create this shape. And it's so thin, it's thinner than paper, it's 0.07 millimeters thin. Then they lay it on and lacquer it by hand. And then there's this stitching. So the thread they use here is thinner than the thread they use on the normal Bentayga. And the stitches are actually half the size. It's just exquisite. Then there's the extended ambient lighting in the doors. So you have two different panels, so you can alter the colors as you wish. And the lights actually shine through little pores in the leather. You'd probably get a bit distracted if you try to appreciate all these features while you're driving. So it's a good thing that some Bentayga owners will have their own chauffeur. The thing about Bentley is, is they're not only good for driving yourself, but also for being driven in. You could use the Bentayga as a chauffeur car because there's loads of room here in the back. Look, and you can slide the rear seats and you can recline them. You can even carry three people in the back at once because this central seat is quite wide. So there is a bit of a lump in the floor, but it doesn't matter too much because there's loads of foot space. Another good thing about the Bentayga is that it's really good for carrying babies because it's dead easy to mount a baby seat in this car. Got ice fix anchor points that you can just get to easy because you just remove some covers and there's loads of room to even fit one of those bulky rear facing seats here in the back. The thing I've noticed in this car is this look, picnic tables for your children or maybe to do a bit of work on we are being chauffeured. Lovely mechanism on them, but then it should be because believe it or not, these picnic tables, they cost 1,700 pounds. Uh, no thanks, I think I'll eat in rather than take away. If you thought that sounded posh, take a look at this extended wheelbase model. The extra sheet metal on this car is part of the reason why this extended wheelbase version of the Bentayga is 98 kilos heavier than the standard car. Obviously some of that weight is in the door there, but to help you open it, it's motorized. So you get assistance. Look, I'm going to open it with my little finger. You do have to pull it for safety reasons, but look, I'm putting no effort in at all. Ah, I'm just going to get in because this is what it's all about. Wow, that's nice. Tell you what's also nice, when you get inside, you don't actually have to pull the door. You just press and hold this button. And let it do its thing. Before we go any further, I need to give you a point of reference with a normal Bentayga. So I'm sat in the back behind the passenger seat because this is a right-hand drive car. I have a tape measure here and I'm going to measure my knee room and it's coming in at 17 centimetres. Back in the long wheelbase now, once again with my tape measure, let's see what we've got here. Come on. Oh, there's more. There's more knee room. 35 centimetres. Way more space. And if that isn't enough, look at this. I can use this new little tablet to make the front seat move out the way and put my seat into its most relaxed position because this car has the top of the range airline seats. I'm going to get relaxed now. Oh, look at this. We've got a footrest. I'll just put my feet up, shall I? Actually, no. Do you know what I should do? Let's measure my knee room again. I think we've made an improvement here. We're uh, 50 centimetres, so half a metre. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? 
the normal Bentayga is available with heated and ventilated rear seats. But this extended wheelbase version gets a special upgrade. The seats can actually measure your temperature and humidity. So you can tell if you're a bit hot or you've got a sweaty bottom and it can vary the cooling or heating accordingly. There's also two zone ionization rather than single zone. That means that if you're eating foie gras here in the back, it can clean up the smell of all that fatty duck liver. The Bentayga isn't the only luxury SUV with a choice of standard and long wheelbase models. The same goes for the new Range Rover. Even though this new Range Rover is pretty much the same length as the old car, They've increased the wheelbase, so the distance between the front and rear wheels, by about 75 millimetres. I say about, it's pretty precise, isn't it? 75 millimetres. <laughs> anyway, what that means is that you've got more room in the back. Look, more knee room. It's good. This is the five-seater version, and you can get it with electrically folding armrest shenanigans for added poshness. But do you know what? This isn't quite posh enough for me because I still feel a little bit too close to the person next to me. And I don't like the option of having someone being able to sit in the middle either. Blah, I'm too rich for that. I need something else. Now this is more like it. You can get a four seater only version. So you have your own individual luxury chair with loads of reclining ability, loads of knee room, because this is actually the long wheelbase car. So this, increases the distance between the front and rear wheels over the standard car by 200 millimeters and it's also 75 millimeters longer than the old long wheelbase Range Rover. And we've got all the mod cons here. So we have an electrically operated table system for if I wanted to do some work. I don't really want to do some work. I just want to chill out, really. I mean, look at this. There we go. I could work if I wanted to. This is sturdy. This is, wow, quite impressed by that. And under here, we have a fridge. They've obviously prepared some drinks for me. That's very kind of you, Land Rover guys. Thank you. You don't mind if I... Yeah, it's not for me, is it? It's for the guests who are going to be coming in here to look at the car tomorrow. I'm just some internet pleb. In fact, if you're an internet pleb and you've got a big family, then you might need a different version of the Range Rover. So for the first time ever, Land Rover has gone and built a seven seat version of the Range Rover. And it really is quite roomy back here. So it's designed to be able to take adults in every single seat. So I set up this middle row in a position that I'd be comfortable in, sat there. And I still got decent knee room here. And I like the fact that these seats are raised quite a bit off the floor. So you don't feel like you're in a stress position. You can put your feet underneath the seats in front. Take no notice of my um, rather patriotic socks, but this is a Range Rover after all. And they've padded all the panels here in the back as well with luxurious leather, so you don't feel like you're in the cheap seats. But this isn't the only luxurious seven-seat SUV on the market. You can also get the Cadillac Escalade with three rows of seats, and these are even roomier than the Range Rovers. Here in the middle row of the Escalade, there is plenty of room. Now you can get it with three seats here, or in this case, two individual chairs, because this one is a seven-seater version. Lots of knee room, headroom's really good. Look, you've got the armrests like that, and obviously I can recline my seat and I can slide it like that. All very good, like this as well. Big windows, and they go all the way down. Also, the quality here in the middle row is the same as in the front, which is a good thing. They haven't cheaped out back here. Speaking of which, look, we've got this big screen here. There's another one for the other middle passenger and you can connect your phone to it to run Android Auto off it. Also, look, we've got HMI inputs for it. So you could run your PlayStation 5 off it if you can get your hands on one. And there's some cup holders here as well. We've got the climate control system. It's all pretty good. Now I'm gonna jump into the back row now, show you how you do it. So I'm just pull this, he says, it's that easy. <laughs> well, it is easy if you don't cock it up like I just did. <laughs> I'm going to pull this back. Ah. See how much room I've got back here? Look at this. Decent headroom. It's comfy. I'm not sitting too close to the floor. There's three seats across here as well. I'm liking that. Oh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? Um, okay, well, I'll just open the, the sunblind. Yeah. Might be able to see a bit more. Because back here you have decent amount of storage as well. Look, we've got a cup holder there, little tray for your mobile phone. There's also the all important USB-C there for charging your phone. Ah, it's a big, practical, comfy 
family wagon in it. Not every millionaire needs seven seats in their luxury SUV though. For example, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan comes with five seats as standard, despite its gigantic size. The rear of the Cullinan is just as luxurious as the front seats. It's not quite as roomy, maybe, as the Phantom, but who's complaining? I've got loads of room, loads of headroom as well. If you need to carry three, you can. That's fine. It's a very wide car. You'll be able to fit three people across this, no problem at all. You can carry babies. Look, there's a sign that says you can there for your ISOFIX points. Brilliant. If you need to carry long items, look, you've got through loading there. This is a bit uninteresting though. I've seen all this before, not particularly special. Yeah, great. Let's see what is unusual though. The way you sit back from the main door and your head's near the quarter light. Sort of reminds me of a black cab. Oh, I've done it again. Definitely not going to get another Rolls Royce, am I? Bugger. But that isn't the only thing about the back seats in the Rolls Royce Cullinan. It's a bit of an arse that as standard, this SUV doesn't have rear seats that recline. If you want that, you have to pay extra for the opulence pack. Probably doesn't really matter for someone who can afford this kind of car. It's more just the hassle of having to tick one more box. You might forget. But these aren't the only seat upgrades you can get in a Cullinan. There's something special in the boot that I've never seen in another SUV. If you want your own personal seating for when you're at the races, you can pay Rolls Royce £13,000 to have this optional boot seating installed. Isn't it glorious? I like how it's electrically operated, though sadly it is only up to this point, and then you have to manually put the backs up yourself. I'm too rich to do this. Now be gone. Ah, it's better. You can also choose to ditch the bench seat layout and go for a super posh two-seat arrangement in the back of the Cullinan. And it's the same story in the Maybach GLS. The GLS is normally a seven-seater, but the Maybach version is a five-seater or this four-seater version only, and that gives you more rear leg room, and it is very luxurious back here. So you'll probably notice that the blue lighting, though you can change it, there's 64 different colours you can choose from, actually wraps around you from the back, as does the wood finish, to make you feel cocooned in the car. And if you really want to stretch out, look, I can press this button, and it's just going to move the front passenger seat out of the way. Lift up my footrest. I really don't want to get my feet <laughs> up against the back of that chair, though, because it's covered in that really expensive white leather. And now I can get my cushion uh, and really relax. It's lovely back here. Also, this one has, look at here, we got the fridge. I've got my Coke Zero in here. Normally you'd have champagne because here are your champagne glasses. And you have special holders for the champagne glasses here. So I just pop them in there like that so that they don't topple over when you're being chauffeured somewhere and you can easily remove them just by lifting them out like that. The car also comes with this tablet so you can control the infotainment system from the back seat if you want to. You just operate it like, it's a Samsung tablet, it's nothing special really. You can upgrade to have 12 inch screens to go on the back of the front seats. It's quite funny to think that this car at £250,000 isn't yet fully spec'd. You can make it even more expensive if you want to. You can't make it more expensive by fitting chilled or heated and massaged seats though, because that all comes as standard, thank goodness. Speaking of spec, which engines can you get with these cars? Well, it's dead easy to pick an engine for your Maybach GLS. There's only one. The Maybach GLS is powered by a four litre twin turbo V8 with mild hybrid technology. So it's got a little motor that adds an extra 22 horsepower when you suddenly need to overtake someone. Combined, it puts out 558 horsepower and 730 newton meters of torque, and that drives all four wheels via a nine-speed automatic gearbox. It's the same story with the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. That only comes with one engine, and it's much bigger than the one in the Maybach. The Cullinan gets Rolls-Royce's 6.75 litre twin turbo V12. Normally, it has 570 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque, but in the black badge, you get 600 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque, and it sounds a little bit more fruity when you rev it. Yes, that upgraded black badge sports exhaust is just a bit more shouty, though it's still ever so refined. And this engine has a party piece like no other. Check this out. Okay, so we're going to see how smooth this 6.75 litre V12 is. So go and start it up. 
What I'm going to do is put this coin on the engine and now let's see how smooth it is. Rev it. The coin is not falling over. That's how smooth a Rolls-Royce V12 is. You probably won't be able to stack your loose change under the bonnet of a Cadillac Escalade though, regardless of which engine you pick. Let's talk about the engine. So there's two to choose from. One is a three litre straight six diesel, which you don't want because you want this one. It's the 6.2 litre V8. Horsepower and torque. 420 horsepower and 623 newton meters of torque. It's a bit of a shout out to my friends over at the straight pipes. Wait a minute, 420 horsepower from a 6.2 litre eight cylinder. My old Mercedes A45S had a two litre four cylinder with 421 horsepower. So one horsepower more than this thing. America! No. If you want to see how the Escalade compares to other luxurious American SUVs, Click on the pop-out banner or follow the link in the description to watch my drag race with a Cadillac Escalade against a Lincoln Navigator and a GMC Yukon Denali. Anyway, if you're looking for an SUV with a much wider choice of engines, the Range Rover is a better option. So there's two three-litre straight-six diesels, one with 300 horsepower and one with 350 horsepower, which is what this car has. Then there's a three-litre straight-six turbo petrol with 400 horsepower. You can get that engine with a plug-in hybrid system with two power outputs. There's one with 460 horsepower and another with 550 horsepower. At the top of the range, there's a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8 with 530 horsepower, or you can get it with 615 horsepower horsepower if you go for an SV model. The Range Rover isn't the only posh SUV with hybrid and V8 options. You can get a similar setup in the Bentley Bentayga. The hybrid model uses a 3-litre turbocharged V6 and an electric motor to produce 462 horsepower. Go for the 4-litre twin-turbo V8 version and you get 550 horsepower. Both models come with an 8-speed automatic gearbox and 4-wheel drive. Bentley recently updated the Bentayga by adding all-wheel steering to S and Azure models as standard. There are also some subtle design tweaks and new interior options. But there is a downside. You can't buy a Bentley Bentayga Speed at the moment, which is a shame because that car came with a 6-litre twin-turbo W12 with 635 horsepower. If your definition of luxury is more high-speed than high-end, this was definitely the Bentayga to go for. Here's how that car compares with a Porsche Cayenne Turbo and a Mercedes-AMG G63 in a drag race. Just ignore the Suzuki Jimny. But let's get back to the sensible stuff. What's the Bentayga like to drive on an actual road? Let's find out with a V6 hybrid model. One thing I like about this Bentley though is it lets you know the transition between being electric and the internal combustion engine coming in by actually putting like a full stop on the throttle pedal. So you feel like you're bottomed out, but you haven't really because that's actually just for electric power. Then if you push past, almost like a kick down, when the whole system just wakes up then and you get full power because the petrol motor has just sparked into life. On the motorway now with the Bentayga, it's got automatic cruise control with lane keeping assist, though that is part of a £6,000 pack, but they're both really good and I'd always want them fitted if you're doing lots of motorway miles. This thing is about 200 kilos heavier than the equivalent powered V8 model. As a result, it just doesn't feel quite as lively, doesn't feel as sure-footed, and it's got the whole thing where you've got the motor, the gearbox, and the internal combustion engine have to work in sync to give you smooth, effortless progress, and it's just not quite as good as just having the gearbox and the V8 engine like you do the V8 version of this Bentayga. For me, hybrids are always a compromise. They add weight to your vehicle. They just aren't quite so smooth to drive. They are, in fact, the worst of all worlds. The only real reason to have them is for that tax benefit as far as I'm concerned but hey if you get one as a company car you save so much money with them and if you can plug them in and you are just poopling around town then you can just use them like an electric vehicle but they're just not as good as an electric vehicle because in an electric vehicle if you want to accelerate you floor it and you take off immediately with this it has to pause and think for a while. The Maybach GLS also has a hybrid system but that works in a very different way to the Bentayga's so is it any better to drive? Okay, let's see what this Maybach GLS is like to drive. So I'm going to start off in town. Here we're coming to a very nice little German town with a speed hump. And I didn't feel it very much at all, even though I'm riding on 23 inch alloy wheels. Oh, this is quaint. Oh, look at this. I'm not really sure where I'm going. And this car is quite wide. 
I'll tell you what, going over these bumps and potholes, the air suspension is doing a great job of just dealing with everything, just as it should be. Also, the steering is nice and light, making my life very, very easy. Yeah, so the cars must wait for me because I'm in a Maybach. Thank you very much, Danke schön. He liked it, gave it a smile. This car has auto emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, so I don't have to worry about accidentally running over the children. Here's an opportunity to check out the handling of the Maybach GLS. <laughs> it's a roundabout. This is not extensive car testing, is it really, people? Let's head out to some faster roads. That was effortless round there. Here's a better opportunity to check out the handling. I'm gonna just whack it into dynamic mode, go a bit sportier. Stays relatively flat. That's the active anti-roll system. Doing its job, keeping the car nice and flat in the bends. Now let's see if this V8 can do a job of making the car accelerate when you need it to. So foot to the floor. Oh yeah, it picks up nicely this engine. And the car goes from being super quiet to actually pretty noisy, <laughs> but in a good noisy way. Okay, let's try it around this bend. Ooh. Yeah, it grips pretty well. Okay, I'm back in town and I've got the augmented reality sat nav helping me out. So it's showing me exactly which direction and turning I need to take. So I can't make a wrong turn, even if I'm a total idiot. Wait a minute. Look, there it is, it's saying, go this way. It's really helpful. So too is the V8. <laughs> De-restricted, let's max it out. How quick can we go? Oh, 166 before, I've got to get off for the junction. Oh my gosh, the brakes are good in this. So this thing, it has the tech, it has the luxury, it has the comfort, it has the performance, and thankfully, it also has the brakes. The Germans don't have the V8 luxury SUV market to themselves though. What about cars from the good old US of A? Okay, let's go for a drive in the Escalade. Now I'm gonna test it in the type of environment that this car would never be driven in at all where it's built and made in the US of A because this is known as an Alpine route, which I don't think they have in America, not really. We have some canyon roads, but generally this car will be used on the highway, basically in straight lines. So this will be a bit of a weird test for it. How's it gonna cope on this twisty section of test track? Is it going to be an absolute disaster? I think it may well be, but let's find out. Ooh, actually, do you know what? I thought it'd just like topple over in the bends, but it's not terrible, it really isn't. Now the old Escalade used to have old fashioned rigid axle rear suspension. This one is fully independent all the way round. It also has air suspension and you've got adaptive dampers. And the car uses a camera looking forward to read the road and it can automatically adjust the stiffness of those dampers. It's not terrible. It's not brilliant, but it's better than I expected. It actually goes around corners pretty well. And over bumps, it's fine. It doesn't glide in the same way as something like a Mercedes Maybach GLS does, but I'm more than satisfied with the way this car is going around this track. <laughs> Tell you what, the engine makes quite a lot of noise when you put your foot down and it doesn't give you all that much power, but then this is heavy as I'm noticing now, as I'm needing to brake for this corner. Yeah, that was a bit scary, but the brakes do the job. You have to give them a bit of a prod, but they're okay. What's not so good though is the gearbox. So sometimes when you put your foot down, it takes ages for it to go, ooh, 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 what, what, you want me to go quicker? Oh, okay, I'll change down the gear. And because this thing is so long, you could be left floundering at a junction. You could create like this big hazard as you're pulling out onto the main road. Oh well. But yeah, I am slightly surprised. And it's reasonably quiet in here. It's comfy enough. I've got a decent view out because I'm sitting up high, although that bonnet is, it's, it's rather long. It's more like a bow of a ship. It's huge, this thing, huge. But it certainly has some presence. Come on, that's it again. Come on, gearbox, wake up. What's the matter with you? Blimey neck. <laughs> it is a statement though, isn't it? Driving around in something this big, especially if you're in the UK. You will get attention. Will it be the right attention? I'll let you be the judge of that. If you prefer a luxury SUV that'll fly a little bit more under the radar, the Range Rover might be the one to go for. Well, 
so long as you don't modify it like this particular owner did. Anyway, now let's drive it. Uh, no, let's not drive the car after what you did last time to my car. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna drive the car or I'm gonna supervise you and you can drive the car. What would you like? Uh, yeah, you, you come along then. Supervising. Can't be trusted. Right, and let's see what this Range Rover is like to drive. I'm gonna start off in town and um, I've got a passenger with me. So I'm gonna judge your car and you can judge my driving. Okay. First off, it feels nice. It's like it's sitting on a sofa seat. I actually thought it'd be terrible over bumps because of the 23 inch alloys you got on it, but. 24 inch alloys. 24? The car came standard with 23 inch alloys, but I got 24s on it. Yep, yeah, it, you don't notice that. The air suspension is really smooth and it's the kind of car you can definitely just drive one fingered like that, <laughs> isn't it? It's just, it's a luxury vehicle. And you get a good view out, don't you? Yeah, it's got a lovely big windscreen. Big mirrors, big back window, and it's quiet. Yeah, cause you know it's got the deafening, it's got the sound deafening in the car. Is it, is that what they call it technically? Sound deafening. Sound deafening. Isn't it sound deadening? No, sound, sound deadening? De or sound deadening. Maybe. Noise cancelling. <laughs> noise cancelling, there we go. We've got the, so it's got noise cancelling, so it is literally very, very quiet in the car. You can't hear anything. And the gearbox, really smooth. Don't yeah. notice it changing gears. I don't actually notice that this is the diesel. It is a three litre diesel. Yeah, you got the wrong one, right? No, at least I got the 350, 350 brake horsepower one. Gonna let you into a little secret here. He didn't know which one he had. We had to go on the government website, put in his registration and find out which model it was exactly. He had no idea of the trim level or which grade of diesel engine you can have. So don't pretend that you knew <laughs> what your car was. At least I got the better one. You got the better one. You really didn't know that you got the better one, did you? <laughs> yeah, this is so easy to drive. Do you get a lot of looks? Yeah, now it's wrapped. It's originally black and it was wrapped in yellow and now I've wrapped it same pearl white. Not gonna lie, yellow was not a good choice. No? No, it didn't look right in yellow. Yellow is not the color for a Range Rover. Layer cake. Yeah, I know layer cake. The what? Duke. Yeah, exactly. He was a drug dealer, mate. Do you, know, <laughs> you wanna look like a drug dealer? I think if you haven't got tinted windows on a Range Rover, then it's like, it's like the Matt Watson spec. No tinted windows, no big wheels, no smoke lights. That is like your, your official white boy I'm, Range Rover. Understated gentleman so you can have it look all like bling like you or you can have it very like just like boring me. like me okay boring all right boring actually that is something we should come on to what do you think about this car as a whole is it exciting boring relaxing how would you describe it how does it compare to your other cars how long are you going to keep it for so i have a new car coming in january the aurus facelift right. so the chance that i'll probably keep this till january it is boring as I said, the seats are like a sofa. So when you're driving, if you're doing a long drive, it's fantastic. But I've got no sound. There's no noise. There's no presence. As much as it's a huge car driving down the road. When you put your foot down, you, you actually think it could be an electric car. I think this is easier to drive in town than the Urus, just because you can see more. And there's something else that makes it easier to drive in town. Tell me. It's the turning circle. You know, you've got rear wheel steering, I right? I like that, yeah. What that means is this car can turn around in less than 11 meters, I think it's 10.95 is what they quote. Really? And that is a better turning circle than a little Volkswagen Golf. So I'm gonna test it out on a mini roundabout, which I can see coming up. No, no, you'll never do it on this one. I'll be fine, look, I'm just gonna like go round and round and round. Won't you'll never pull it off here. Oh, it is tight, this is. And there's a high risk of me curbing your 23 inch alloy wheels. The 24s. Oh, I keep forgetting. 24s, I mean, is that even possible? Ah. Uh, Look at this, look at this, dude. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, 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 are we all right there? I feel we're in the middle of the round of it. Look, 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 look. Well done. Oh, I so did it. You didn't think I'd get around there, did you? I didn't think you'd get around there, to be honest with you. It actually was better than I thought. That rear steering does make a big difference, for sure. That is nuts that it did that. I cannot believe it myself. I didn't think it would, but it just almost turns inside itself. It's crazy. Anyway, I want to do something else now. I want you to drive. Right, you're going to drive then. Let's okay. you go put the car down. Can you get out? Pardon? I'm going to put the car down. Get out. Well, why do I need to get out? I'm going to just climb through. With my white interior. You're fine. Feet aren't that dirty. 
you look cross. Look, I won't touch on this. I promise not to touch. I just want to do this. See, look, no touching. There we are. Normal people get out and walk around. It actually seems quite roomy in here. It's not bad. Look, decent knee room. Headroom's good as well. Bloody hell, man. That's man. all fine. How short are you, mate? Can I put the seat back? Yeah, uh, yeah, there's loads of room. Hopefully there will still be room once you're in position. How tall are you? 6'2". So 6'2", driver in front, still got decent knee room. Foot space is good as well. Yeah, very roomy. Go on then, chauffeur, let's drive. Okay, now we're gonna see what the Range Rover is like on the motorway and what it's like to be chauffeured in. Let's feel the punch of your engine. We're doing 50 mile an hour. There you go, 70. Yeah, that was smooth, that was. This car is blooming quite at speed, isn't it? Yeah. And in the back, it's really comfy. Sometimes when you move into the back of a car, because you're over the rear wheels, you can feel the bumps a bit more, but here, nah, it is nice. Got some big windows to look out of as well. Huge armrest, which feels expensive. Yeah, keep your eyes on the road. You're looking around what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, then under here, you've got some storage, you've got cup holders. Yeah, and I think it's through loading as well. Where do I pull that down? How do you do this? Anyway, let's move on to the fact that I can recline these seats. Yeah, that's good. And I've got my own climate controls down here as well. And some USBs, you can charge your devices. And decent sized door bin, so there's practicality. And this is the sign of an expensive car. You have folder style pockets on the seat backs. Did you know that? That's how you check how posh a car is. What are the pockets like on the back of the front seats? That's motoring journalism right there. Motoring journalism 101. Still can't figure out. Ah, here we go, I got it, I got it. Don't look round, you're coming off here. There we go, look through loading. Problem solved. Last thing to do is to try this car on a twisty country road. Big old Range Rover, surely gonna struggle. Especially with the Annie driving. So, go on then. Let's pick up some pace, see what it does. Has it got a sports mode? No. Are you sure? Probably has. Of course it's got a blooming sports mode. This is 60 mile an hour, this road, you know that? Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, 40. You're driving like a grandmother. Come I've got on. a car in front of me, mate. What do you want me to do? Go over the top of it? Ah, this is narrow. Whoa! <laughs> right, do you know what? I think I need to experience this for myself. I want to see what it feels like, Jan. So, pull over. There you go, sport mode. We're in sport now. Up. That's a not actually full sport mode either. How do you know? Don't worry, just keep your eye on the road. Right, like? look, watch the road. Let's pull over. This is scaring me now. This is it. This is it. Let's... <laughs> Come on, pull over. Where do you want us to pull over? Where, wherever you can, there's space no, there. Nowhere to pull over. I, just, I need to get on and review it. Come on. It's not me. You're going on like it's me. Eventually. Right then, Yanni. Sports mode. You don't just put the gearbox in sports, which is what you did. You turn this knob there. Right. So we're in sports mode now and then I'm gonna put it into the gearbox as well. Now, what that's done is actually sharpened up the suspension, made it stiffer. You've also got anti-roll control. The anti-roll bars are active, so it'll stop the car leaning in the bends. Do you know what? It's all right, isn't it? I'm quite impressed by it. Here we go, this is a challenge though. This is a proper twisty. Well, hopefully I'm not gonna understeer your car off the road into a bush. The brakes are all right. They're not grabby, they're quite smooth. I imagine they might overheat if you start going really quickly and then doing lots of sudden stopping for tight bends. But yeah, look at that, the pickup's good. It's not an Urus, is it, though, on a twisty road? Let's be honest. No, if it had some sound, you'd feel like you're going faster. You might be wondering what these luxury SUVs are like at off-roading. Well, I've also tested the new Range Rover V8 and new Bentley Bentayga V8 in a series of tough off-road challenges to find out which is better. If you want to watch that whole video and find out which car wins, click on the pop-out banner or follow the link in the description below. Now, let's be honest, only a minority of Range Rover owners will actually do any off-roading. And you can bet that even less Bentayga drivers will. These cars are designed to be smooth and comfortable on-road. And no car prioritizes comfort more than anything else than the Rolls-Royce. Now it's time to find out what this Rolls-Royce Cullinan Black Badge is like to drive. So the first thing I'm noticing is the novelty of being sat up this high in a Rolls Royce. I can see why they built this thing. It's pretty obvious. It was a hole in their product lineup they just need to fill. People love SUVs and people love Rolls Royces. Combine the two and you 
have quite a few sales for such a normally niche brand and product. The black badge, that has something a little bit special going on. You see, it's got a, dare I say it's sportier edge? Sounds a bit odd in a Rolls Royce. In fact, there is a sports button in the car, but it doesn't say sport, it says low. It's low, it's just here. Now, when I press that, you get different mapping for the throttle and the gearbox. And with the black badge, it's more aggressive than in any other normal Rolls Royce. So it means that when I put my foot down, it just instantly takes off. If this wasn't a black badge model, it would have been smoother, the pickup. Also, the gears change with more ferocity when you're in this low mode and with more ferocity than they do in a normal Rolls Royce Cullinan. The suspension is firmer as well in the black badge over the normal Cullinan. And the Cullinan's normal suspension anyway just feels a bit stiffer than the Phantoms. It's not quite so wafty. When you come onto a twisty section of road, this car does all right. It'll go around corners as well as you need it to. And of course you've got four wheel drive grip. Another thing you notice with the black badge model is the exhaust more when you're driving. It's quite interesting a Rolls Royce making that sound. You don't expect it, but it's nice. And it's never obtrusive either. I'd love to take it off road, but I can't. I can't risk it. I don't want to scratch the paintwork and get hit with a bill to have it repaired. Oh, that's a good thing. The brakes are strong. They're smooth, they're progressive. There's a long travel to the pedal, but they do a good job of hauling this behemoth to a halt. It does feel like you're captain in a ship though, a little bit, but I kind of like it for that. It's got character, it's got style. Well, not so much style, it's got presence. Definitely presence, style, it's debatable. Let's just get out of low mode and relax again. And now I can appreciate how quiet it is in here. Rolls-Royce has fitted this car with so much sound insulation. In fact, there's twice the weight of me in terms of soundproofing fitted to this car. You've got double glazing windows. You've also got foam in the tires so you don't hear any road noise. That all makes this car brilliant for cruising on the motorway. So do the super comfy seats, which are almost infinitely adjustable. I've back to back this car with the Phantom and the Phantom is definitely slightly more comfortable. It feels more luxurious still than this, but that's not taking anything away from the Cullinan. It's still very luxurious in its own right. You can just chew up the miles in this thing. Just ignore the fact it enters 17 miles per gallon, but who cares, you've got loads of money. You own a Rolls Royce, it's not a problem. The problem is having to stop to fill it up. Although it's got a huge tank, so you don't have to do it all that often considering. It's quite interesting driving it on these narrow roads. Can it cope with these bends? That's fine. Oh, here's one little test for the car. Will people wait for it? Bearing in mind, I'm in a Rolls Royce. Now you could have left me more space than that, couldn't you? Thank you, kind sir. Is it because you are jealous? Oh, jealous eyes. <laughs> little does he know this is not my car. I'm just borrowing it for a few days to fill for you guys. Oh, and again, the width is posing a bit of a problem. I'll tell you another problem with the Cullinan, and that is trying to fit it into a normal size parking bay. So here I have a car park with some reasonably generously sized bays. Can I fit in the entire bay without spilling out of it? Like a fat person in two small clothes. Let's have a look. Go on to 360 degree camera. Oh, it looks like I've just about filled the gap, but I may have just squeezed in. Still, it might be a bit difficult if this car's parked next to me, because you can see where the doors open <laughs> on this graphic. Still, that's a small price to pay for being able to drive one of these as your daily. That's all well and good, but what about the actual price of these cars? Well, these are the entry prices for each model. However, as with all luxury cars, there are numerous option packs that can push the price up even further. The Rolls-Royce with unlimited customization options is a cut above the rest. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, the Cadillac is absolutely massive, a little bit too large in fact for the UK, and doesn't feel anywhere near as luxurious as the others. The Range Rover is lovely, but it's a little bit common. It makes you wonder if it's worth paying the extra cash for a Bentley Bentayga or Maybach GLS. Those cars certainly turn more heads than the Range Rover, and they both feel posher inside, especially in long wheelbase trim. But they are significantly more expensive, and they don't necessarily feel that much better to drive. But when it comes to the ultimate luxury SUV, it has to be the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. 
I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, I've picked a couple out for you there. I think you'll like it. Just click on those windows to watch them. Or if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can do that just by hitting the Carwell logo there. Simple.